This video is about building a diorama, about being inspired, and about a game called Rivenstone. Broken Anvil, the sponsors of this video, and the creators of Rivenstone have given me free reign to make a video based around their new creation. And for once, I know exactly what to do. The setting of Rivenstone, the style, the factions, the plot and story have inspired me to make a diorama. I think my most elaborate diorama to date. A diorama I've spent a lot of time on and I've been having a blast. The world of Ven, which is the world where Rivenstone takes place, is in a state of post-magical apocalypse. The inevitable recklessness of people rich in both power, illusions and grandness and the world's most powerful substance led to magical use of catastrophic proportions. Everything went bang, not in a good way. Imagine Fallout, the computer game, but swap out the plutonium and related radiation with magic and magical radiation. Torrents of magical energies have ravaged Ven since the Bang. Magic that has reshaped and twisted the landscape and its inhabitants. This is something I want to reflect in my diorama. A, a landscape that is a little wrong, cracked and rugged, a little weird. Also coloured a little wrong. Well, at least coloured a lot. And something that is relatively untouched, a wilderness untouched for centuries, left to thrive in its new altered way. Because it has been untouched, only now, centuries later, have the magical storms diminished and the inhabitants that remain, the survivors, can again venture forth. Some have survived this colourful and probably quite sparkly apocalypse by hiding in shelters protected from the magic storm underground or behind magical barriers. Others survived by mere resilience and strength of constitution. Some have changed a little, altered by magic. Some have changed completely. And saying that they survived might be a slight exaggeration, even though they still do walk the earth that is Ven. Magic on Ven is so present, so concentrated that it crystallizes. We call it Rivenstone. Magic you can touch, magic you can mine, harvest and hang around your neck for a lot more fun than just a pretty display of wealth. Rivenstone is spread all over the land awaiting to be picked like mushrooms, only magic. Oh, yeah. This, probably the main feature I want for my diorama. A Rivenstone deposit, glowing in all its magical glory, reminiscent of uh, Homeresque plutonium, just a little more pink. Now, Rivenstone can be used as a physical fuel, an espresso boost of your magic vein, to enhance the performance of traditional acts of magic. You know, like Shazam, Pink, Fireball. But, as with the previous plutonium reference, Rivenstone can also be used to magically power machines, contraptions, power suits, weaponry. Want stuff to work a little better? Just rub some Rivenstone on it. And as yet another plutonium reference, total opposers to the use of Rivenstone exist as well, whom wisely consider what such an awe-striking power can do in the wrong hands, which is probably the same as last time. And that was the wrong kind of bang. So what's now going on in this post-apocalypse is a bit of a gold rush. Civilization has been decimated, but all are bound to the importance of Rivenstone. The armies of the past now mere warbands hunting the lands for magical deposits, for power, survival, monetary gain. The needs are many and bound to conflict. And this will, of course, be the story of my diorama. Like a photograph or a painting, this is a frozen moment. And that moment should, of course, be the struggle and fight for Rivenstone. Two factions after the same deposit. Like an Easter egg hunt, immortalized in miniature form, but with less bunnies, more pink glowy crystals and probably quite a few hand weapons. 
Now this is quite the lovely concoction, a world, a setting, where everything is a little Willy Wonka, but without the chocolate. A fantasy setting, but with the option of magically fueled power armor and machinery. A landscape altered by magic, where mountains can be turned inside out and forests can be blue with sparkles on top. Factions that are altered, bound or possibly even cursed by magic. And so let's talk a little about game specifics. Rivenstone is a skirmish-style tabletop war game. A player's warband typically consists of 8 to 15 models and come in different factions, like the Shattered Empire, that's the humans, Oryx, sort of orcs, the Iron Guard, dwarf folk, and the Risen, it's the dead humans, but that have yet to stop wriggling. The starter boxes for these various factions are fully playable warbands and consist of everything you need to play the game right out of the box. Not only miniatures, but rules and dice and rulers and all that stuff. The miniatures are produced in Sciocast Hard, a plastic that holds crisp details and produces durable miniatures. Brent, from Goobertown Hobbies, recently made an introductory video on Sciocast that I can recommend for the curious plastic enthusiast. And I mean, just worth watching because of Brent, because he's in it. The Oryx miniatures used in this video are Sciocast. When given the opportunity to choose miniatures for my diorama, I really wanted to feature the dwarf faction, the Iron Guard. The story of these dwarves is great, essentially surviving relatively well in their underground cities, but worried about the future of trade and thus making money. They decided that everyone would just be better off if the Iron Guard owned all mining rights to Rivenstone, so that they in turn could sell it to those with the fattest wallets. I also enjoy the visual aesthetics of this game and its miniatures. As Dana Howell already has pointed out, please do check out Dana's video on Rivenstone, by the way. Anyway, I enjoy the flirtations with visual aesthetics, reminiscent of computer games like Warcraft. The Warcraft I used to play as a kid, before there was an internet and we all lived in caves and ate dinosaur eggs with flint utensils. There is a cartoonesque vibe, not only in the graphics, but in the miniature sculpts themselves. To my eye, playful. And being playful, strangely enough, is something that I can sometimes miss in our world of playing games. With the dwarves, it's the drill and mining weaponry. The tunnel fighters, armed with handguns and grenades. Very handy for something like a diorama, making it possible for me to build in levels. Iron Guard making their way from the depths of the earth towards a riven stone deposit in a small ravine close to the surface. Unfortunately, some oryx were also in the vicinity. Their picnic by the stream got interrupted by the sound of a magically powered drill. A lot worse than your neighbor's power drill. And if there is anything to annoy an oryx, it's the sound of machinery, especially on a Sunday morning. And maybe that would be the name of this diorama. A Sunday morning picnic. The Oryx, the Orcs of this world, are altered. Mutants, if you will. Surviving out in the magical wilderness has not only made them tough because of life, like growing up on the wrong side of the tracks. Their bodies are also in strange ways altered by magic. This also seems to annoy the Oryx, whom are apparently intent on destroying as much Rivenstone they can get their hands on, before someone goes and does something stupid with it. The thought of mutants fit my Fallout comparison so well that I tried to paint the skin of these Oryx so as they would feel more like mutants than Orcs. I also wanted a colour scheme that would feel a bit like camouflage in the green of the rest of the diorama. Something like a mutated wood elf, I guess, with big teeth. All in all, the painting of everything in this diorama has been me challenging myself, but also kind of trying to paint a little fearless. The sense of glow from the Rivenstone lighting up the burrowing iron guard with pink reflections, also giving their metal armor a sense of dark blue light, daylight maybe, coming in from an opening in the ravine we can't see. 
a little glow on the crystal belt buckle of the tunnel sweeper. I was thinking maybe Rivenstone goes orange when used to power these Iron Guard suits. The skin of the Oryx I've blended in more colors than I've ever tried before on skin. Blue, purple, red, yellow, green. To get depth and texture and, well, something not flat. Toning in cooler colors into the shadows is something I've been trying on the entire build and miniatures. Also to try and balance out warm and cool tones. More on feeling than by use of a color wheel. In the end, with the final piece, it's actually a little weird. The idea that everything we see is slightly altered by magic made me just try and use all the paint without apparent logic. And in the end, I personally feel that this is one of the most realistic paint jobs I've ever done. I guess, at least to my eye, the world really is magic. By now, you would have noticed that my narration and what you are seeing is not always connected. This is not an attempt at a new style of video, more so a reflection on the time spent on this diorama. The Oryx skin could have been a video in itself. So could the OSL glow, or painting Lenny the Frog, christened by you, by the way, during a live stream. Narrating every step of this build would have made a very long video. Instead, I'd like to make a short one and talk about some memorable highlights. First of all is of course the fact that Rivenstone is now running as a Kickstarter. Link down below in the description. From what I understand, that is exactly what this is. A kickstart. This will all not end after the Kickstarter ends. Rivenstone will be supported continuously. It is a new game system, not only a one-time release. But please do check the Kickstarter for more information. Now other random, memorable highlights. Using a variety of building materials was something I enjoyed and think looks great. Mixing 3D printable scenery bits with natural materials like coconut shell and cork bark. Adding etched brass vines, different texture pastes and milliput sculpting created a wonderful living landscape. Trying to paint crystals to look like they're glowing is really tricky, period. Trying to get away with as much colour as possible and without thinking too much about why one is doing such a thing is a great experiment. My diorama does not have grey rocks. It has blue rocks, red rocks and green rocks. To me they look like stone and not grey miniature diorama rocks. My diorama has green earth, red earth, yellow earth, blue earth, purple earth. To me, it looks like living soil, and not just like that brown earth one buys in bags to mix with flowers in pots. And the same goes for skin, in this case a mutant version of Caucasian skin, but regardless of mutations, I've been surprised at how many different colours I could add while painting skin tones. My biggest takeaway with this diorama is that I let myself get carried away and very much enjoyed it. The hours spent on this build are many, and it's been great to let that happen, regardless of Age of Sigmar armies and uh, Stargrave terrain. I would like to thank Broken Anvil for supporting creators like myself, making dioramas like this a little more likely to happen. As well as my patrons, who continue to support my ventures in this miniature hobby. Thank you for watching this video. Please do share it with all your friends and make sure they like and subscribe. If you want to make them really happy, your friends, that is. You can buy them some of my merch. Links in the description. You could even make them join my Patreon. For the continued prosperity of this channel and for the overall good of mankind. Bye.